Okay, so I've cleaned the glass. I've got the front glass sitting loosely in place. That goes either way up. It's not sided in it at all. You can tell which way faces the front. Now getting the rear glass in is always a bit of an act. Effectively I've got to pull this forward and get the rear glass down in position behind it. Like that. And I have to say that was not a representative sample because usually it's bloody worse than that. But uh, that went very smoothly. But that's what you've got to achieve. Put the front glass in place. Put that uh, metal piece in place. Use one screwdriver to pull the metal piece forward. Slide the rear glass down in position. And everything just falls into place in an ideal world. The cover just fits back over the top. I'll just remove that greasy fingerprint from the outside there. And there's my top cover ready to go back on the camera. Which I can do now. So here's the camera body. Everything's sitting in place. The film advance is sitting in the position where it's about a quarter of a turn. So the arm sticks straight out the back at that point. If I slide my top cover on gently. If you rush that, you'll end up pressing the film release button, which will immediately allow the film advance to zoom back to the start position. And you'll wonder why you can't get the lever to move correctly after that. There's the, sp the screw. Let's just run that down the film advance. Of course, I've got my fat fingers in the way so you can't see anything again. Checking that moves smoothly. It does. That's working smoothly. Right, so I'll put the two screws in the top cover now. These screws, these chrome screws are shorter than the chrome screws used on the Retina 3C type cameras. At this end, it doesn't make much difference, but at that end, if you were to use a longer screw, it will pass straight through the bracket and it will interfere with the film advance. And you won't be able to get things to move correctly. So do not, if you have to replace one of these two chrome screws, make sure that one of the originals goes back in at the film advance end. Right, so there's the collar that goes on top of the rewind. And the rewind, let's see. I've got a wavy washer here. I'll just apply a little bit of grease to that. Pop it on the centre part here, pop the outside piece on, and put the screw through, and screw it through to the inside of my film re rewind shaft. Now generally speaking, you don't need to do this because the screw is retained in the rewind knob and you just have to unscrew the rewind knob or screw it back down. In this case that wasn't the case. This rewind knob's been drilled right out 
um, as a result if this screw is not done up tight afterwards you'll find that you can turn the knob but the fork inside does not rotate so here's our camera body all pretty much complete all that remains for me to do here is to glue my leather back in place and I'll do that now I'm applying a little bit of adhesive directly to the leather here and I want to spread that out evenly using a toothpick to ensure that I've got an even layer of, of adhesive particular care to see that the adhesive gets to the edges I might be a bit shy down there, so I'll put a little drop down in there. That should do. And press the leather down into place. Watch closely to make sure that you don't have too much glue about. You do not want any of it to go down around that rewind button because it will effectively glue the rewind button to its little sh protecting shroud and then things will not want to move smoothly. Now the leather almost inevitably has shrunken over time as it's dried out and what that means is that it doesn't want to sit down easily around features like this it's got to be stretched to go around them so it's worth spending a bit of time making sure those are pressed down firmly and that's it that's all I need to do to the leather there and that's the camera body done so now I can turn my attention to dealing with the shutter and then the shutter and lens assembly can go back on the camera body and then I've got a couple of tasks that need to be done at that stage the first is I need to check that the focus is correct um, I've had to guess what the position of the focus scale ring was on the focus helical I believe I've got that probably very right because I can see where the screw heads had bitten into the focus scale ring and so I think that's probably correct but I'm not, not entirely, not 100% sure of that and the other factor will be adjusting the shutter release so that uh, the shutter releases at exactly the same point or as close as I can achieve it to the point where the film advance lever is released to allow you to wind on for the next shot. So for the moment the body can go aside and here is the shutter and lens assembly and this is the state it was in after I'd removed the front so that I could take out the shutter release lever in order to uh, get the shutter body off the camera now interestingly enough the retaining ring that looked like it was going to be a serious problem to remove actually unscrewed fairly easily and it's actually fairly free on the threads now it wasn't as free as that originally it was a little bit rough uh, given the scarring inside this ring where a tool has slipped off up the inside of it by the looks of it it's no wonder it was not exactly dead smooth but I took this on another shutter body put some brasso in there into the thread and then ran it on and worked it backwards and forwards and that effectively polished out the rough part so that to one side, here is our shutter body 
what do we need to do to this? Well I want to get the outer case off first. There are two screws hold that in place. This one, the flange on it, now that's the screw that positions the shutter in the camera body and that stops the shutter from rotating in the camera body. That case should slide off. Now our flash sink wire here is held in. There's a little tiny screw visible at the back there. By slacking that screw off slightly, I should be able to slide out that sink wire. Here we go. So there's our housing. There's the curved rack that cocks the shutter mechanism. This is the detent for the aperture settings. And we've got our shutter case here complete. So, for the shutter case, I'll start removing some stuff from the top. And I'll start here removing this lever, which is the B lever. That holds the shutter open when you have the shutter set to B. It holds the shutter open while your finger is on the shutter release. That's got a return spring. There are two screws hold the top of the flash sink selector mechanism in place. This one is a shoulder screw which centers it up on the lever. Let's see if I can lift off the top cover. Two brass spacers. Unhook the spring. Lift out this lever. This is the two pieces. They're held together with a little spring. And there's the other piece that's no longer held with the little spring. A single screw holds the moving flash contact in place. Let's try another screwdriver. That one. This also holds, there's our flash, moving flash contact and the arm that works it. Here is the 500th of a second or high speed spring. Here is the cam that works the pallet for the flash sink delay. And there's the pallet itself. The pallet wheel stays on the base. It stays as part of the mechanism plate. All right. So, our flash, where our flash sink wire went in the side here, I'm going to remove that screw completely. Pop that carefully to one side, it's very small. There's a small plastic insulator, which may or may not fall out easily. doesn't want to, we'll leave it in there. We'll get it shortly. Single screw from the top holds the fixed flash sink contact in place. That doesn't want to lift out. I'll loosen the three screws that hold the mechanism plate and shutter case together. I'm just loosening those. It's part of a turn. And I will poke out the plastic insulator for the flash contact that really doesn't want to move. Now oh, it does loose but a bit reluctant to come out. Yeah it's going. That's quite fragile. It's some styrene type of plastic. 
it must be out of the shutter before you start splashing any solvents about, otherwise you're going to end up with endless grief. It'll turn to a sticky puddle instead of a plastic flash contact, and then you're going to be buggered. So make sure that's out before you start splashing any solvent about. I see them ruined fairly frequently. If they're damaged, if they're cracked uh, or split, that's not at all uncommon. Uh, typically they'll still function. They don't have to be mechanically strong, they're an insulator. Mostly it's just a case of you're an insulator to bring the wire up to the contact. Sometimes they're fractured into a couple of pieces. You can always put them back. Put them back with a little bit of uh, nail varnish to stick the pieces together as you assemble them in place. So here's our mechanism plate and the shutter case side by side. Having a quick look at the mechanism plate. I'm looking to see if it's been, this, the blades have been put in correctly. This is blade number one, it's always in that position. Blade number one has an extra hole. The extra hole in it only helps to identify the blade. The blades are otherwise identical. It's um, a feature, almost a feature without any practical use. But that's the case. That's blade number one. And it's always here opposite that particular rivet, which is here about a quarter of a turn almost from the end of this uh, retard gear train. Nothing remarkable to see there. That all looks fairly normal. The shutter case. Well here I'm looking at the diaphragm and looking at those blades, they're slightly distorted. Um, they're oily. Almost certainly the distortion has been caused, or they don't, the lever doesn't want to move. Almost certainly that's because the blades are actually gummed up with oil. And if, when you push on the lever, effectively you're trying to force those blades to move. There's a large area, surface area of thin metal stuck together. You start pushing at one end and it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to distort and that's typically what happens. I can look at these blades. They are not lying flat. They're curved up. So these two screws here, which fortunately are visible, hold the setting lever at the back of the shutter, the aperture setting lever, to the internal ring here which will rotate that, actually moves the settings. So that, there's nothing remarkable about that ring, it's relatively clean. Let's see if I can get those two shoulder screws out. One's fallen out for me, the other one will not. Yeah, it's just wriggled out now. And we've got the retainer plate here, three screws. One of them is a countersunk head screw. You'll see that there is a matching countersink in the plate for that screw, so it's not hard to figure out which one went there. These three screws can come off. And lift off the uh, retainer plate here. Typically I just tip the whole lot out in one go. Like that. Now these blades, it's quite normal for them to come out as a rosette like that. But these are particularly sticky. There's also something else a bit unusual about these blades. You'll see that they are, have got a great notch in them. They're relieved at the back edge. And in this case, it looks like all the blades are relieved. I don't know why that was done. It certainly doesn't help them with their uh, strength because you've reduced the amount of metal that's in them to bugger all. The only thing that comes to mind 
regarding that is that it was possibly done in order to reduce the amount of friction from the blades moving across each other. Typically you find shutters with blades that don't have notches in them, that they're complete normal blades. Sometimes you'll find shutters where some of the blades have notches and the other ones don't. Almost inevitably it's some odd number and I've looked at that closely trying to work out what reasoning there was for having some plain blades and some blades that were relieved. The only thing I can say that might shine a light on it is that it's much easier to deal when you're assembling the shutter it's much easier to deal with whole blades, blades that aren't notched in the first four positions because you have to swing them back out of the way while you get the last blades in and then swing them back over. It's much easier if they are whole blades, not notched blades. But uh, regarding this shutter with all notched blades, that's going to be entertaining to reassemble I would say. Even entertaining to clean these things because diaphragm blades are a little bit vulnerable to damage anyway. Um, it's easy to catch a cotton bud on them when you're cleaning them and effectively buckle them up or just bend them slightly. Any distortion in them and they don't lie flat. And if they don't lie flat it's very hard to get them reassembled again. So this could be fun. I'll pop that to one side and I'll start with the shutter case. Now the shutter case is easy there's nothing controversial about the shutter case it's just a nice piece of aluminium and uh, I've just got to get it clean all I've got to do is clean it inside and out carefully with naphtha and a cotton bud I'll take special care to get this outside thread here cleaned that's where the retaining ring goes the inside thread is where the rear lens group goes and I'll just make sure they're clean and make sure the inside surface is clean. This is really the simplest part of it all doing the cleaning. Um, some components need a little bit of care when you're doing cleaning on them so that you don't accidentally damage them. But it would be pretty hard to damage a case like this, so it's very easy. So you can see I'm pulling all the rubbish, all the dirt and stuff out of the thread there. Likewise the inner thread. And you can see the amount of dirt that's come off there. Often, even when a case looks comparatively clean, it might be contaminated with oil. And that oil, if it's left in place, will inevitably find its way over to the diaphragm blades or the shutter blades at some inconvenient time in the future. That's good. That's all I need of that. This ring. This is the moving ring in the diaphragm or aperture settings. This is the part that's rotated between positions to change the aperture settings. So one end of the blade, each of those diaphragm blades is fixed in the plate and the other end is runs in slots the rivet runs in the slots here in this thing as this is pulled in one direction or the other it forces the ends of the blades inwards or outwards effectively opening or closing the aperture the diaphragm blades of Unlike shutter blades, diaphragm blades are not laid just one on top of another. They are interleaved. So each blade is on top of the next blade at one end and underneath 
the next blade at the other end which makes it or can make it entertaining trying to get them positioned correctly especially if they're damaged if they are distorted and don't want to lie flat you can probably see the staining on here that'll be oil from this plate it's probably also some staining from the uh, possibly corrosion of that plate this side faces the shutter blades and it's more important that this side be clean and smooth um, these stains that I see on here they're surface corrosion I'm looking at the pattern of it to see if I can determine what's caused it sometimes it's quite obvious sometimes the pattern is clearly a fingerprint and it means that somebody's grabbed it between probably thumb and forefinger and that their perspiration has effectively etched into the surface of the metal that's quite common in this case it doesn't look anything like that at all um, that looks vaguely like the uh, number three over here but I'm not sure that's really the case I think that's just a uh, an accidental artifact that surface certainly doesn't look particularly good normally I don't do anything with the plate like this normally I would um, just clean it and let it go but that's I'm just running the tip of my tweezers over that and it, it's not dead smooth I can I can feel some slight roughness to that particularly there that's just the weight of the tweezers rubbing on there I'm not pushing down on it but I can feel that that surface is not smooth and this is the surface that the shutter blades run across it's effectively swinging in and out over this surface if it's rough it probably means that the blades don't move as quickly as they should be or as smoothly as they should do I'm going to polish this with some Brasso I'm not so concerned about this face the flat, the flat face goes against the diaphragm blades there's no requirement for the diaphragm blades to move quickly um, it's only for changing the di changing your settings that they're moving at all and that's a very slow thing but the shutter blades have to be able to swing in and out very very quickly so I want this to be nice and clean and free from uh, any hint of roughness so I'll clean that with some brass oak 